understood this quote and I started to really look at it, I realized and, and I started really grasping the fact that who I am is where I've been. I can pretend that I'm someone else. That's what I was doing. I'm the successful businessman, I'm this and this, I have every answer for everything, but who I am right now is where I've been. Good job, yeah. you're pressing your button. Yo, what up guys, it's Gary Vee, and it's time for the Daily Bread. Give us our daily bread, I want the whole basket, cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way, not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward, right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. Has anybody heard the difference in the stuff that has come out of my mouth in the last, the last four months compared to last year, the year before? Is it different? It's completely different. Do you know why we came up with that four by 25 and seven months of days off in a year? Because, man, I do not want making money I don't want you to get to the end of your days and go, man, where were the relationships? Man, what? The relationships with my kids, my spouse, my lover, they're one and the same. Don't you look at me that way. <laughs> my husband, I will find you. <laughs> So anyway, I, I can't wait for today. It's gonna to be interactive, it's gonna be intense. We should have put some Kleenex out. But, uh, but guys, I know that it's gonna help you, right? So if everybody would get to their feet and welcome Sean Whalen. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. That's a good, I didn't ask for that track, but that's a good one. <laughs> so, guys, thank you. Seriously, it's, it's more than humbling to be able to look out and see my brand, to see this thing that came to me one day because I was full of shit, because I had burned my world to the ground, to see this message literally spreading across the, the globe, to have conversations. What's funny is when we first started talking, I want to keep you up here for a second. You were afraid to book those trips. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to book those trips, why? I don't know. You were afraid of judgment of other people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. How many yeah, of us true. are living this life worried about what everybody else is gonna say? Here's what's fascinating. Yeah. You're going to be judged regardless of what you do. If you're fat, you're lazy. If you're super ripped, you've got to be taking steroids and you're on drugs. If you're rich, you've ripped a whole bunch of people off. If you're broke, you're unintelligent, you're this, you're this, you're this. People are going to judge you no matter what. Yep. That was one of the things I told you. I said, mm -hmm. candidly, fuck all of you. He did say that. I did. I said, fuck your employees. Because if the ship sinks, everybody dies. The nobility is thinking like, hey, I'm gonna, all, all of you guys out there, how many of you have kids? How many of you have kids? I'm gonna put my wife's mask on first, my kid's mask on first. There's a reason when you get on an airplane, the very first thing they tell you is what? But what is, what, is, what is our social currency? What is our social conditioning telling us? Oh, I, I gotta be the victim and I'm gonna put everybody else's mask on first. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem, motherfucker, is that there's no air. And so now all of you die. Mm -hmm. Nobility is like, I'm gonna save everybody. Mm -hmm. You can't save shit until you can save yourself. And the experience with you was, was phenomenal. I wanted to say that. And then I also wanted to say, I've worked with a lot of different companies, a lot of different people around the globe. And your, when you talk to me about culture, mm -hmm. I hear that a lot. There's a lot of companies that have culture, you know, that really don't have culture. What I experienced last night was, I don't say this just to tell you this, but it's truly remarkable. I mean, 
I didn't hear anybody talking about money or insurance last night. And that's kind of the business that you're in, right? I love money. I'm sure all of you love money. Copious amounts of it, if possible. Piled right? up, stacked up. Yeah, tons of it. <laughs> but I don't know if you noticed, I'm sure you noticed, but I noticed that right out of the get is a completely different vibe and energy here, which is really remarkable. So kudos to you and to your team and to all of you for really building a culture. It's very, very, very difficult to do this. I know maybe two or three other companies that I've personally worked with that have been able to accomplish this. It's what's sought out in business. It's what makes a duplicatable model profitable and possible. So I wanted to just give you Thank you. Man. Hats off and your team. The, the, the table that was set over here, I mean, there's a lot of people that do a lot of things for the stunts and for the, the appeal and for the look and whatever else. And there was an energy and a vibe here last night that was really, really, really remarkable. So yes, sir. I appreciate that. Amen. All right, go sit the hell down. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you. All of you have been very, very cordial to me and I appreciate that. And social media is such a unique experience. It really is. And we're not talking about social media. I'm not teaching you how to build social media and expand the brand and do the whole thing. But it really is phenomenal to be able to, to be in a place where I can share something and a million, five, ten, twenty, you know, Tyler and I were talking about last night, just tens of millions of people being able to consume a message, listen to who you are. I had this experience um, about a month ago where I was laying in bed and I had a vision. I have a, I have a vision. How many of you have visions? Really? How many of you see shit? For real, like you see shit. This is like, listen, if I ask you a question, raise your freaking hand. Like all of you are weirdos, all of you are crazy. Like we're all equally crazy, right? But I had this vision and I, and I saw a, a, a dad and his son watching one of my videos. And it like, it brought me to tears because I realized like we have a very, very, very finite amount of time here. A very, very finite amount of time. We think, we plan 401ks, IRAs, we're gonna be around forever. We, we, you know, once I retire, then I can have the fun. And I, I, I literally had a vision of this guy and his son watching these videos. And like, that's who they knew me as. They don't know me, they'll probably never meet me, but that's who they understood me to be, what I put out there. When you're meeting people, when you're talking to people, when you're engaging with people, when you're selling people, like you might never see them again. You might, you might not. When you're meeting people walking down the street, when you have these interactions in the airport and on the airplane and in the coffee line and the whole thing, like you have an opportunity to leave a mark. I lived a lot of my life burning the candle at both ends until I actually burned it out. And so that's why I have the ability and, and why I love sharing the message that I share is because I did burn it out. I did do the 20 hour days and I did ultimately leave my entire life. So today I want to accomplish a couple different things. I don't know what you guys were expecting. I knew you'd be intense or this or that. Or like maybe Sean's gonna like punch people in the face and kick them in the face and whatever. And I'm like, no, it's not me. I'm, I am very, very intense, but I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate about life. Cause I realized like I might not see the sunset tonight. That's not morbid. That's real. That's reality. Like, it's not morbid to think that way. So every interaction, every person, every conversation, every deal, every post, every everything is like the fucking realest, raw shit, period. Not to try and impress you, but it's like coming from the soul. Because if I leave it on the table, like, somebody asked me not too long ago, what's your, what's your biggest fear? My biggest fear is something happening to one of my kids. But really, my biggest fear is being on my deathbed, which chances are I won't ever be on a deathbed. I'll die like in my race truck or some fiery crash doing some stupid stunt that like kills me or whatever, which hopefully we get on video. We'll go, you know, for, for posterity's purpose. But I have this fear, I have this, this insane fear that just replays in my brain of laying on my deathbed knowing God put ideas up here and passion in here and I squandered it because I was worried about what you fuckers would think. That God put ideas and passion in here, and I was worried about what people would say about my videos, or people would say about my posts, or people would say about how I live my life. Contemplate that for a second. Contemplate that. 
literally visualize being on your deathbed, knowing that there's, there's shit that's been put in here. I don't care if you believe in God or not. Something bigger than you put something in here and in here. And you played small. That scares the shit out of me. Does that scare you? How do you feel when you think about that? It makes you, it makes you kind of, it makes, it makes mortality real. You start looking at people different. You start looking at your business different. You start looking at the time different. You start looking at kids' soccer games different. You start looking at date night different. You start looking at your body different and everything differently when you realize that, like, this shit's going to end at some point in time. Like, I'm pushing the chips to the middle of the table. So today what I want to accomplish with you guys is two things. Is this morning, I want to talk about truth. I want to help you go deeper. Whatever that means for you, however that looks, I don't know, but that's the journey that we're going to go on, okay? My only request for you is that you play all in. You guys had an experience where you shared some deep shit the other day, right? How did you feel? Did any of you feel judged? No. Fascinating, isn't it? Yes. Fascinating. I was, at, I was speaking at a marketing uh, deal last year. I was telling Tyler this last night. Uh, in front of 500 people, and I'm talking about marketing and social media and how I've been able to get 800 plus million views of my videos and blah, 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 and build this multi-million dollar company. And I'm in the middle of this thing and, and I just, I follow the promptings and the Almighty was like, ask this question. And I said, how many of you ever thought about killing yourself? And it was like, like people are like, what, what did he just say? Did he just say that? Like, what the fuck did he just say? And it was like, it just, the energy went from like, what, what just happened? And I said, how many of you thought about killing yourself? I have. Raise your hand if you have. And literally, almost every single hand in the room went up. It's real shit. It's real. They said, all right, great, put your hands down. How many of you ever talked about it? How many of you ever shared that with people, your lover, your family, your kids? Maybe four or five hands went up. Here's, the, here, here's, what, here's what the reality is of this. You think you're an island. I thought I was an island. I went through the nastiest, craziest fucking divorce, which I'm going to talk to you about here in a minute. Possible. I'm like, you, know, you have no clue how bad it was, bro. You have no idea. And then all of a sudden I started talking about it, and there was a ton of people like, oh, yours was bad. Yeah, let me tell you about mine. I'm like, wait a second. There's other people that had, like, really fucked up childhoods. There's other people with like abusive fathers. There's other kids that were like molested when they were kids. And there's other people that had bad experiences. And I'm sitting in front of all of these people and it's like we literally are living in this world where we have so much fucking fire and passion and energy and excitement inside of us and experience and stories of who we are, where we've been. And we just play in this box. We say the same shit that everybody else says. We do the same shit that everybody else does. Why? This is who I was. This is how I got to this point. This is why I'm standing here, is I was that guy. I was raised in a single parent household. Parents got divorced, yada, yada, yada. I was a little hustler, little entrepreneur when I was a kid. Made a bunch of money, blah, 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 okay? Got into lots of trouble, smoked lots of pot, and then decided to try out the Jesus thing, try out the religion thing. Went on a two-year Mormon mission. Came home, got married, Started cranking out some kids. Like, isn't this kind of how we've been programmed, right? You go to school, you do the deal, you get a job, you get a wife, you get a white picket fence, you pop out a couple of kids, you get a minivan, maybe a Suburban if you're lucky, take a vacation once a year to Disneyland, and everybody's ha happy. I did all that shit. Like, I went all in, though. Like, I had a bunch of cars, the Rolexes, nothing wrong with Rolexes. At, like, 25 years old, was a self-made multimillionaire. I was living the dream. I was living the American dream. See, we've been lied to about what happiness really is. We've been lied to, all of us. I hate to break it to you, but your parents lied to you. My parents lied to me. Since we were little kids, sit down, quiet down, slow down. Don't say anything that's going to offend anybody else. We don't talk about sex, money, politics, religion, any of that stuff, right? Because Aunt Sally might not come over for Thanksgiving. Then if Aunt Sally doesn't come, then we got a beef and a problem. But, so just don't talk about anything. 
Yet, what are we all facing and dealing with and living every single day? Sex, money, politics, religion, business, family, all the shit that actually matters. Well, what do we talk about? Weather. Oh, those candies are great. Yeah. How's your last month? Oh, great. Okay, see ya. That was where I was. And I built this life up and I had all of these cool things and I had this American dream, right? I had 171 employees. We were doing a million a week in sales. It was really big business. I started that from scratch myself. It was awesome. It was really cool. I was very successful in the magazines, 30 under 30, little awards, accolades. Yeah. And then it hit me, which it hits pretty much everybody. At some point in time, the question is, is will you ever acknowledge it, live it, and do anything with it? Because most men, I think most women too, just lie about it. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I have all of this stuff. I'm doing all of these things. Why am I not happy? Why do I wake up hollow? Why am I wanting to be at the office more than being at home more? Why am I like addicted to this freaking thing? We'd go to Disneyland. I'm like, honey, we're at Disneyland. She's like, dude, you've been on your phone your entire time. I'm like, well, I'm working. How the fuck do you think we afford to be here? <laughs> we think magic, the money just comes into my pocket. I got to work, baby. That was my life. Does that sound familiar to any of you? Does that sound familiar to you? How many of you have lived that? That's what most people are doing. It's because what, what we were told to do. That's the box. It's the box. And you drive down the neighborhood with your friends, your minivan. Hey, neighbor, hey, how you doing? Good, good, good. Well, she's popping Xanax like they're freaking Skittles. He's banging four of his secretaries. <laughs> Nobody's fucking good because we're all lying. We're all full of shit. I was full of shit. I was really full of shit. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Dude, look at Check out the Audi, bro. The inside, I was dying. I was dying. I didn't know what to do. What do you do? You don't talk about that shit. Who talks about that? You don't talk about that. It's like Bush League to talk about that shit. You're a pussy if you talk about that stuff. Because men don't talk about that stuff. So I burned everything to the ground. I left a 10-year marriage, three kids. There was no cheating. There was no infidelity. There was no drugs. I just literally shut the entire fucking thing down. I literally walked in one day. I called my business partner. I brought in a guy to help me run the company. I gave him a small equity percentage, which was the best decision I ever made. He said, come meet me for breakfast. And I had my attorney drop a one-page thing, and I turned the entire company over to him. I didn't take a dollar. I didn't take, we had hundreds of properties that we owned millions of dollars, da, 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 I took nothing. I said, it's yours, see ya. And I essentially left reality for two years. Stuck my head up my ass. Like trying to figure out why I was here. Like have you ever asked that question? Have you ever gone to whatever deity you believe in, whatever thought process you have? Have you ever like really asked that, like why the fuck am I really here? How many of you have asked that question? How many have an answer to that? Like, why am I really here? What's the purpose? It's, it's easy to make money. It's easy to hustle. It's easy to have a family and kids. Like, what the fuck am I doing here? And I didn't have an answer. And so I dabbled in this and dabbled in that and masked all of my insecurities and all my fears and all my pains with Drinking and girls and dude, look at all these hot bitches. Yeah, I'm, six, I'm, I'm so happy. I was miserable. Until one night, I went through this divorce. And it was bad because I was angry. I was like super, 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 super angry. But I didn't know what I was angry at. I wasn't angry at God. I wasn't angry at my ex. I, I was just angry at everybody. You ever been angry? I was angry at everything. I was just angry, period. I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't know who or what. I was just pissed. And in this process, I moved out of my 9,000 square foot house and moved into a little two bedroom condo and the ex-wife's driving the Escalade and living in the house and she starts dating this dude who's 10 years younger and he's a waiter at a restaurant. And I'm like, I was like king dingling, right? 
Like, I was the big dog, had the big business and the big whatever, and she's gonna like start doing this. And it, what do you think happened to my anger? What do you think happened inside of me? The ego of the man, the rage, the frustration, the pissed off. And one night, I called her. Like, we had to pick up and drop off our kids from a police station, that's how bad it was. Like, I was purposely trying to hurt her. Why? Because I was dying inside. And I didn't know what to do about it. So one night I called her and I said, I just need to talk to you. It was one of those nights. Have you ever had one of those nights when everything's bad? You can't breathe. Have you ever had one of those nights where you can't see anything? It doesn't matter how much money's in the bank. It doesn't matter how many cars, how many whatever, whatever. You just, you just feel like everything's crashing. Have you ever had that feeling? So I called her. I said, I need to talk to you. She's like, I can't talk. I said, listen, it's bad. I need to talk to you. And I could hear him in the background. Who is it? Is it Sean? Hang up. And I'm like, motherfucker, I will smash your face in, bro. <laughs> She's like, I can't talk to you. I said, I need to talk. Like, I was dying. I didn't know where to go. Like, the weight, it just felt like I, I couldn't breathe. I made all of these mistakes. I fucked up all of this stuff. The business, the things, the kids. I mean, my kids, like, what are they gonna think? They're gonna read about. And I'll never forget, as long as I live, I'm like, I need to talk to you. She's like, I don't wanna talk to you. And she hung up the phone. Now I'm in this little shithole condo by myself with nothing. The kids are with her and him. Like, it was bad. And that was my night. That night, I put a nine millimeter in my mouth. And I was wrestling with two ideas. If I leave, my kids are young enough, they'll forget me, they'll be a new dad, they'll go into normal land. It'll be normal. This cat, you know, maybe she'll find somebody that'll have a normal job. Like this entrepreneurial guy like me who was making more money than all of her family and siblings combined, that's just not what it is. Like that's danger, that's bad. And the other part was like, dude, I, I can't leave my kids. I can't do this. And I wrestled an entire night and I put a nine millimeter in my mouth. And I don't remember what point in time I fell asleep, but I remember waking up and the gun was right next to my head. And that was my night. And I woke up, I'm like, I can't fucking do this. But I didn't know what I couldn't do. These lies that we tell ourselves, this mask that we build, this bullshit that we say, what are we angry at? I don't know. Why are we doing it? I don't know. Like, this is the programming. This is the social conditioning that I had done everything I was supposed to do. I got the house. I got the family. I got what the fuck is going on inside. And that was the turning point for me. I finally realized I didn't have an answer. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. How many of you have ever had this experience? How many of you have ever not had any fucking clue where to go? what to do. You've had so much pain and frustration. Raise your hands. Raise them up. Look around. I believe in God. You can turn to God. Turn, leave it to God. Turn all over God. I did all that. Cool. We did all that. But there's something inside of us that's like screaming to get out. And it's truth. This box that we were told since we were little kids, sit down, quiet down, do all of these things, here I was at 30 years old going, I did it all. Why don't I like any of this shit? Why am I not happy? It's because I was doing everything based off of what? Somebody else's rules. Whose rules? Whose rules are they? Because if you went to school and you, and you spoke up and you did something, who would they call? Your mom or your dad. And then what would happen? The shitstorm would happen at home. So your parents are like, listen to them, listen to me, just shut the fuck up and sit down. Do as you're told. Be a sheep. And there's, this is the awakening. This is what's happening in our culture. This is candidly the beauty of technologies. It's opening up opportunities for us to connect with other people, share our stories, learn, realize that there's something way bigger out there. There's something way deeper out there. And for the first time in my life, I reached out for help. Do how many of you really like understand what reaching out for help is like we don't do that as men we don't reach out for help we have the answers and we just beat our chest how you doing good 
I mean, I was, dude, I, you, how many of you bullshit your way into everything, right? You think you know it all and you say you know it all. When I'm right, I'm right. When I'm wrong, I'm still right. <laughs> it's just how we're programmed. We're not programmed to ask questions. We're not programmed to say, I don't know. It's weakness. What if for a second, though, that's the single greatest power you could have? Debbie Ford talks about in The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. Write that down. If you haven't read that book, I highly recommend you read that book. Dark the Dark Side of the Light Chasers. She talks about vulnerability. She talks about how vulnerability is one of the single greatest powers that we have. And what changed my life that night and the following day is me hiring a coach. Me reaching out to a friend of mine saying, I have no clue how to change this. I don't want to be angry anymore. It was killing me. It was killing me. And so this is the journey that I've been on. Understanding how to be real. How to be raw. How to share. How to be comfortable in doing that because that's not what we're programmed to do. We don't share the vulnerability. We don't share the deepness, the darkness, the thoughts, the fears. We just share all the simple shit. And most people are unhappy because of it. Most people know that there's more. They know that there's deeper. But what do we do? How do we do it? How many of you have made a mistake? How many of you? How many of you? Oh, that was my next question. The follow up was how many of you have made a lot of mistakes? I'm going to write something down that I want you to write down that as I understood this, it's one of my favorite quotes. As I understood this quote and I started to really look at it, I realized and, and I started really grasping the fact that who I am is where I've been. I can pretend that I'm someone else. That's what I was doing. I'm the successful businessman, I'm this and this, I have every answer for everything, but who I am right now is where I've been. If you can't read that, let me know. You are who you are today, right here, right now, because of the choices and decisions that you made yesterday. You are who you are. You are the net sum total of everything that has happened, everything that you have done. You are who you are right here, right now, because of everything, all of the decisions, all of the choices. Where most people go is into hiding the darkness. All those mistakes, the divorce, the bankruptcy, the lies, the cheating, the insecurities, we hide all that shit. You are who you are right now today because of that. Contemplate that for a second. I don't care how dark it is. I don't care if you put a gun in your mouth. I don't care if you robbed, if you stole. I don't care if you abused or you were abused. You are right now the net sum total and that's a fucking beautiful thing. What I did is I hung my hat on the darkness. I'm completely fucked. I've screwed up so many different things. And then all of a sudden my mind shifted and I realized like, no, like I know a lot and I've been a lot of places and that's good. How much more connected can I be with my children? How much more connected can I be with my lovers and with my friends and with my business because of the things that I've learned, the places that I've been? How many of you have been some really dark places? How many of you have been in the darkness? No? You've never been in the darkness? Raise your hand. You're going to get out of today what you put in. You'll get out of today what you put in. Like you are who you are today. Think about that for a second. Contemplate that for a second. That's fucking power. I viewed it as darkness. I viewed it as a liability. I viewed it as, let me package all this shit up and put it in the back and lock it up in this little freaking safe so nobody ever knows about it, nobody ever hears about it, nobody ever understands it, because that's weakness. 
then all of a sudden I started sharing these things. One night, after literally like two years of the worst experience with my ex-wife, my coach challenged me to do something. Okay? Is it hot in here? No? Some, yeah, huh? Okay. My coach challenged me to do something. He challenged me to write my ex-wife a letter of appreciation. Now understand, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I want this bitch to die. <laughs> like, 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 listen, let me explain something here, homeboy. Like, if she got hit by a bus tomorrow, I'd be like, sweet, give me the kids, we're gone. Like, I had pure disdain, I had pure anger, I had pure fire for this woman. And I did what most of you have done when it comes to facing tough shit. He's like, here, I want you to write this letter of appreciation. I'm like, no, 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 look, I'll climb Mount fucking Everest. I'm not doing that shit, but give me something else. And he's like, no, that's the pill you got to swallow. See, most of us, we wake up, we read the motivational books, we see the shit, we get the challenges, challenge through this, and we're like, ah, yeah, that sounds great. What's the other option? <laughs> it's what we do. If you want the results, you have to do this. Oh, yeah, that sounds, all right. What's the next thing to do? <laughs> No, motherfucker, you got to do this. That was me. And he challenged me. My coach challenged me at the very beginning. That was the very first thing he had me do. I paid this cat a lot of fucking money. He's like, I want you to write your ex-wife a letter of appreciation. I'm like, no. No, I'm not going to do it. It took me three and a half months to write her a letter of appreciation. Okay? And the whole time, what was I doing? Kicking and screaming, give me something. Give me the other pill, man. I'll go buy the climbing gear. I'll climb Mount Everest tomorrow. For real, I'm not writing her a letter. Was that a letter for her? Nope. I wrote her a letter. <laughs> Fuck you and take this letter. <laughs> Choke on that shit. I don't fucking care. <laughs> that was one of the single greatest decisions that I ever made. Because it changed me. And all of a sudden, I started realizing it wasn't for her. None of this shit was for anybody. It was for me. And over the course of 14 months, I wrote her letters and sent her text messages and emails. And she never responded to a single one. You understand, I was a dick. Like, she was kind of a bitch, too, but I was a dick. It took 14 months before she ever said thank you. Think about that. What do we do when we face hard shit? How quick do we give up? For real, how quick do you give up? 14 months. She finally said thank you. So one day I went to go pick up the kids. She was remarried to the 10 year younger waiter. They had a kid. The whole time everybody's like, dude, they can't even afford whatever. I'm like, I know, it's part of the deal, Ugh, whatever. So I pull up to pick up the kids, and my kids come out, and they're like, Dad, come in and see the baby. Come and see the baby. I'm like, ah, it's okay. We were at a point now where I was actually going to the house to pick up the kids, which was a major fucking milestone. Come in, come in. I'm like, no, it's all right. We're good. Just grab your shit. Let's go. <laughs> no, Dad, come on, come on. And my daughter, bless her heart, Mom, can Dad come in and see the baby? And I'm like, Jesus Christ. I don't just get the fuck in the car. I want to go. Please don't. I want to go. <laughs> She comes back to the door. Mom says you can come in. Yay! And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I don't want to go in the house. And that was me. It was all me. Pure pride. Her house. Her house. No. No, they, they had moved and, and it was a new house. I got out of the car. And was like, all right. I mean, I've, stood, I've spoken in front of 50,000 people in a football stadium before. Like, I, I'm cool, I'm good, right? Ice, right? Yeah, right. I'm like, more, I'm like, fuck, what am I gonna do? Okay, so I go in. Hey, hey, Summer, how are you? And it was like this awkward, just experience, yet at the same time, it was fucking rad. And so I'm like, hey, I'm like, yeah, come in, Dad. And so I go in and I sit down. And bless his heart, my son runs over, grabs the baby, and like runs and drops the baby in my lap. And I'm like, fuck this, <laughs> shit. <laughs> We're taking this thing way too fast. Like slow, pump the brakes. <laughs> I'm in the house, let's just do this for a second, right? And so I'm holding the baby, and I had a moment. 
And it was a really cool moment for me. I finally realized I'm like, all of this shit led to this. I can put a gun in my mouth. I almost blew my fucking brains out. Any of you that have read my book know I can tell you what like, the taste of gunpowder and oil tastes like. I put a fucking nine millimeter in my mouth. Tears streaming down my face. I almost blew my fucking brains out. I know what the darkness, I've danced with the devil. And many of you have too. Many of you have too. And me being me, I was like, oh, I need to document this moment. This is prior to the social media thing. So I snapped the selfie of me and the baby. And that night, hey, give her the kid back, we leave. I'm like, I need some whiskey after that. We go home, my kids are getting ready, and I just sat down on my bed and I typed out this Facebook post. My coach had challenged me to start writing like positive shit on Facebook because I was so negative and like just mad at everybody. And I wrote this post and I just said, none of you will have any fucking idea like what this moment meant. Like I was a dick. I did all of these things. I said some of the meanest, nastiest shit to this woman because I was angry. I was pissed. None of you will have any clue like what this moment means. And I click send. I posted it. To make a long story short, went to bed normal, woke up the next morning and had 1K next to it. For those of you that are on Facebook, that's 1,000 likes. So that was like unheard of. I had like 10, 20 at a time. That was like big for me. That post went on to have 10,000 likes per hour for like the next week. It was unfucking believable. It went viral. Whatever viral really means, that was viral. What made that happen and what made that reality for me is I did what is written on the very front of your book. Open up your, well, grab your book, your Top Gun book. The very bottom, the cover. For the very first time in my life, I took ownership. In that Facebook post, I didn't say hashtag but, but let me explain something to you about how big of a bitch she was. I just flat out said I was an asshole. And I owned it. And that single decision, that single post has changed my life forever because I realized like none of you are responsible for shit with me. I'm 100% responsible for everything. All of the good, all of the bad, all of the mean text messages, I don't give a shit what she said. If you get cut off on the freeway and you get out and beat that dude's ass, that has nothing to do with that dude. You chose that. I don't give a shit if he spit on your car, if he flipped you off and said, fuck you. For the very first time in my life, I realized how powerful ownership was. For the very first time, I realized like, how powerful this was. Like that Facebook post triggered everything that is today for me. And what I realized is that that was really the first time that I told the truth. That Facebook post was the very first time that I told the truth. Everything else had the layers and the masks and I had been in the box. How many times you hear about people divorced, right? Everything's somebody else's fault. People are broke, everything's somebody else's fault. Like this is, this is our culture, this is our society. We blame everything on everybody. This changed my life, it changed my life. And since that period of time, since that, that experience, like I've built the most phenomenal relationship with my ex-wife. We're friends, we went camping two weekends ago together with the young husband <laughs> and her and the kids and I got my big old RV trailer and we're riding dirt bikes and we're hanging out and it's fucking beautiful. It was the single hardest thing that I ever did. I built multiple multi-million dollar businesses. That's fucking easy, man. That shit's easy. Telling the truth is one of the hardest fucking things I've ever done. Telling the truth is literally the hardest thing that 99.99999% of my clients have to do. Because it's really easy to do what? Because everybody else is doing it. It's a stamp. I mean. you, go, you go to family dinner. I mean, what do you really talk about? How many times are you surprised? Oh my God, he killed himself? We didn't even know he was dealing with some shit. So-and-so's addicted to something, they seem so normal. I just was with them yesterday. 
we have a fucking epidemic in this country, in our culture, in the society, on this planet of lying. Like, we have literally been programmed since the day we were born to lie. And what I'm here to tell you is that that is what is killing, drowning, suffocating people's businesses, their relationships, their lives, everything. Most people, I, are you a liar? Nope. I ask all of you that, probably raise your hand. I'm not a liar. But you're not telling the truth. So which is it? We've buried so far inside of us what we really feel, what we really want, who the fuck we really are, that some of us don't even know anymore. How does that feel? Have any of you ever experienced that? You just put on the fucking mask and you do as you're told, you live as everybody else lives, you lead as, it, as you're supposed to lead. How does that feel? What happens to a man, a woman? What happens to you? You suffocate. Hmm? Empty. You can have all the fucking money in the world. You can have all the nice shit in the world. You're fucking hollow. Who gives a shit? Through this entire process, one day, I was doing real estate. I was a real estate guy. I flipped a ton of houses. That was my mojo. That was my jam. I was really good at it. And one day, I was actually looking at this bespoke clothing company in Europe. And they had this really weird name, like, like wolves not lamb, or wolves not uh, uh, something, something, I totally forgot the name. And it came into my mind, lions not sheep. I was like, okay, cool. Like, it just started banging in my head for a couple days. So I called my friend and I said, hey, can you make me a t-shirt? Like, I have this thing, I just want to make a t-shirt. Lions not sheep. But just, you know how something's just in your brain and you can't get it out of your brain? You're like, what the hell's going on? And you try to get it out of your brain, but you can't. That's where lions not sheep started, is it became me became my, my entire life, became who I am. Every decision, every comment, every everything that I do, I have two choices. Do what I'm supposed to do based off of somebody else's rules, somebody else's standards, say what I'm supposed to say, have a conversation about this political thing or this relationship thing or this kid thing or this deal, or do what's fucking burning inside of me. So you've been given a gift. You want to know what the gift is? You're fucking sitting here. Your ass woke up this morning. Congratulations. <laughs> you woke up this morning. Think about that shit. You woke up. Do you know how many people that didn't OD, that didn't kill themselves, just flat out never fucking woke up? Have you ever walked through a cemetery? How many of those people do you think would give anything that they had, would give every worldly possession for one more hour on this earth? Think about that shit. How many people in a cemetery right now, all of them, would give anything to have one more hour? And here we are bitching about what? Our mocha fropa frappuccino with too much fucking whip in it. <laughs> Contemplate that for a second. This is life. This is what lions, not sheep is. This is what the opportunity for every single one of us is. It's a gift. Life's a gift. Waking up every single morning is a fucking gift. And you are who you are today because of everything that you've done leading up to this point. And that shit is cool. You're being, a gift, you're being given a daily gift to share, to teach, to empower, to enlighten. What would you say today if you knew you weren't going to see the sunset? Who would you call? Who would you text? How many letters would you write? Fathom that for a second. Contemplate that for a second. That's real shit. None of you motherfuckers is guaranteed to be in this room tomorrow. What would you do today? My message for you, go do that. Go do that. The more uncomfortable we become, the more comfortable we become. The more letters we write of appreciation, the more we find depth inside of us. 
How many of, of you have read my book? Jesus, that's fucking awesome. How many of you left a review on Amazon? Five-star review, by the way. <laughs> Every single second. Yeah, we should. I want to I share this with you really quick because it's in the book, and then I have a couple things that I want to do. I, as I said, last night changed some things for me in seeing your culture because what I had planned on talking about, what I wanted to talk about today is, is a little bit different than what we're going to talk about. Um, but I want you to understand something. Like you have a bandwidth. You have an ability every single day to have consciousness, to have a mind, right? You have your 100%. If you've read my book, you know what I'm talking about. This is peace, love, compassion, faith, hope, everything. Everything that's good. Excitement, optimism, all this shit. If you're hanging on to bullshit right now, you're literally taking from this. You got beef with mom. We want to run fast. We want to be good parents. I want to be like the most badass dad possible for my kid. Kids. Z. I want to be there for them. I want to be the best business owner, the best coach, the most present that I can be. And literally every single day I'm giving away bandwidth to other people. Peace, love, compassion, energy. How many times have you sat with another human being and like you're looking at them talking and you know they're not even on the fucking same planet? They're like somewhere else. How many of you are that asshole? Real, for real. My friends, you have an opportunity, like moving forward here today, not only financially, not only setting new targets and winning new awards and new accolades and all this other shit. You have an opportunity to like literally walk out of here today completely new. There's nobody making you mad. There's nobody making you hang on to bullshit. No one. I don't give a shit what they did. I don't give a damn what they said. If you're angry, it's your fault. 150%. If you're not walking into every single conversation, having every single moment with your child fully present, it's your fault. How do you feel about this? How many of you are giving away space? How many of you are letting people live in your head? Rent free. Rent free. The only person that that's hurting is you. But it's your choice. So here's what I want to do. I like, we need oxygen in our brains. This is something I've been studying big time, so on and so forth. Can you check, is it raining? Can you pop a thing over, see? Nope. No, perfect. So here's what we're going to do. Listen, please. We're going to walk. In, we're going to walk. If you go down these stairs, there's a big green bridge. Please don't talk to anyone. Don't talk to anybody. I want you. You can go out this door. Fantastic. I want you to just walk to the bridge, and I want you to just feel. Where am I at? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? What shit am I hanging on to? What baggage do I know? What am I feeling right now? I don't even need to ask you. You don't need to divulge it. You don't need to freaking put it on the table. You know. You fucking know where you are right now. Am I operating at capacity? Am I all in? Have I cleared the decks? Or am I hanging on to bullshit? Contemplate that for real. You can lie to me all you want. Guess what? I'm still going to sleep like a champ tonight. <laughs> Your lies have nothing to do with me. They have everything to do with you. something really, really amazing and beautiful about silence and about just isolating your mind. We don't do it enough. I'm a huge fan of meditation. We don't have enough time today to get into meditative practices and all this other stuff, but I can tell you that just walking by yourself and not talking and not having to get it in front of you and the whole thing, I mean, it just gives you a moment of connection. Yes? 
We don't hear enough. We don't listen enough. We think we're smart and we want to learn, but how do you learn? By talking? By searching, Googling? I mean, just shut up and listen. Everything that you guys need, everything that I need is already in, it's all already here. Every single thing that you need is already inside of you. Everything you need to be ridiculously, radically, amazingly happy, it's already inside of you. The problem is we're just consumed with noise, we're consumed with things, and it just blocks every single thing out. And so we don't hear. See, we think that we're really, really, really smart and yet we read these books by moguls, and, and, and as a father, it's been an interesting journey the last couple of years as I've read more and more biographies of successful people. Steve Covey used to be my neighbor. You guys know who Steve Covey is? He wrote Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He, he's Provo. He lived, I lived right next to him. Yeah, I lived right next to him in Provo. So he taught uh, Sunday school every Sunday and was in the same ward and the whole thing. And what's fascinating is as you read these books... Almost every single one of these moguls, these icons of business, of life, whoever they are, whatever they are, almost all of them say the same thing at the end, which is what? If I could go back and do it all over again, even Steve, I would have spent more time with my family. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would spend more time doing the stuff that I wanted to do. But we're so smart. We're smart, right? We're really, really, really smart people. So we read like all of the chapters except for that chapter. Like, no, 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 no. I got to, Gary Vaynerchuk says to grind, and I got to grind, and 20 hours a day is the only way I'm going to be successful. And yet here's all of these moguls, all of these icons that had it all, that built it all, that we look at, that in a lot of ways we idolize, saying, dude, if I could go back and do it all over again, that's like their parting piece of advice. Their parting piece of advice, if I could go back and do it all over again, I would have spent more time with my family. But Sean, I gotta build. I gotta build my business. It's gotta be huge. And I gotta work 20 hours a day to do it. So as you walk, you start feeling. I wanna share a video with you guys right now. And most of you, well, all of you that have read my book are familiar with this video. There's an insane amount of power that comes from repetition. Would you agree with this? How do you become a master at something? Repetition. You ever been to a baseball game? You ever been to a, a major league baseball game? Yeah. Or a basketball game or a football game? Yeah. You ever notice anything interesting about being at a professional baseball game? I was at Fenway Park a couple years ago watching the Yankees and the Red Sox play. And I'm watching these $200 million worth of baseball players warm up. You know what they were doing? The exact same shit that I did when I was in high school playing high school baseball. They're the best in the world. And they're doing the exact same stuff that I was doing and that every little leaguer is doing across the country right now. Go to an NBA game. What are they doing before the game? Fucking layups. Your kids are doing layups in the driveway for hell's sake. So why are they the best? Why are they the best? They just mastered the basics. They mastered the basics. And to me, the basics of the mind is repetition. And so every single morning, I start my morning with very, very specific rituals, very specific things. And so I want you guys right now to not write, don't write anything. We're gonna, get, we're gonna write down what you guys experienced here in a second. I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to listen for a minute, okay? There's a lot of power in just listening, just listen. There's, I can't even tell you how many times I will put on a video and I will just feel what it's saying. I will feel what it's saying. And so before you, you, you write your download from your walk, I want you to listen to this video. Clear? So put your stuff down, put your pens down, everything down, and just close your eyes and just listen to this video. Be the hero of your own movie. If your life was a movie and it started now, Forget about whatever financial disasters you've had, personal failures, relationship failures. What would the hero of your life's movie do right now? Do that. Do those things. We define ourselves far too often by our past failures. We look at our past and we say, well, that's me. 
that's not you. You are this person right now. You're the person who's learned from those failures. And you can choose to be the hero of your own movie right now. Write down your goals. Write down things you want to improve. Write down things you won't tolerate from yourself. Write down things that you've done in the past that you never want to see yourself do again. And go forth from here as the hero of your own movie. Build momentum. Build confidence and momentum with each good decision that you make from here on out. You can do it. Anyone can do it. We live in unique times. We live in one of the rarest times in human history where you can choose almost all the input that comes your way. Whether it's the movies that you watch, the books you read, the podcasts you listen to, you can choose to be inspired. Do that. Do that. And be the hero of your own movie. Any of you that have read my book know that I watch that every single morning. And I do, I watch that every single morning. Because there's power in that. How do you feel, what, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Give me your immediate takeaways when you listen to that. How many of you have ever listened to that before, by the way? What are your thoughts? How do you feel right now just listening to that? Go. No lies, no more lies. No. You do what you want. Fear, empowerment, acceptable. No more excuses. Freedom, Freedom. Freedom. shut up, negativity from others. Um, really now. Own it. Act rather than being acted upon. Today's the day. Because there might not be no more memories with my kids. Do I take that? Like, your movie's not my movie. My movie's not your movie. But we're all writing a movie. We're all living a fucking movie. Be the hero of your own movie. Like, who would the hero be? What would you do? What would you look like? How much money would you earn? How would you fuck? I'm serious. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All the ladies were like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm being 100 fucking percent serious. See that shit. Who the fuck do you want to be? Go be that person. Fuck yesterday. Fuck what your friends say. Fuck what your family says. Fuck all of them. It's your movie. It's your fucking movie. Are any of them paying your bills? Nope. Go do your shit. Live the way you want to fucking live. You're giving way too much fucking stock to other people. Way too much stock to what other people think. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down what you felt when you walked. I want you to write down what you're feeling right now, where you want to go, what you want to be, just what you're feeling. It doesn't have to have a specific title. It doesn't have to have a specific direction. What are you thinking right now? What are you feeling right now? What's coming through you? What's coming into your brain and out, and out through your soul? Write that shit down. We'll take about 10 minutes to do that. Go. When people are struggling, listen to this, write this down. People that struggle with depression are focused on yesterday. People that are struggling with anxiety and are always anxious and always have anxiety going on, they're focused on tomorrow. They're worried about tomorrow. They're stressed about tomorrow. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how big your muscles are. I don't give a damn who you are. There is literally nothing that you can do to change yesterday or tomorrow. When you move into that level of consciousness and you realize, yeah, I did some dumb shit. I did lots of dumb shit. I've moved into a place where I realize that I'm a good fucking dad. Are you good, are you, you have kids? Are you a good dad? Are you a good business owner? Are you a good man? You got your weaknesses, pitfalls, whatever, cool, just like everybody else. Are you a good man? Cool. You are who you are today because of all that dumb shit. And I realize that. So when you sit here and you're like, I am a good dad. I'm a good dad. I'm a great fucking dad. I'm a great leader. I still did all that dumb shit. That's what makes me who I am right now. Now, other people can put you wherever they want to put you. You're an asshole. You're a thief. You're a liar. You're a cheat. That has nothing to do with you. That has nothing to do with you. As your opinion, your thought, that's great. That has nothing to do with me. There's a lot, this is why when we talk about fear, people are afraid, right? We're afraid to start a business. We're afraid to grow. We're afraid to talk. We're afraid to speak. We're afraid to share our deepest, darkest shit. Not really, because you've done it before. 
They're afraid to fail. We've failed tons of times, right? Who's failed plenty of times in their life? Yep. You're a fucking expert in failing. <laughs> you're not afraid to fail. What you're afraid of is the judgments of other people, which is what holds us back. So when you get to come out and say, again, I don't know the story, but it doesn't matter, anybody. When you were a, a bad husband, you did bad shit, now you find yourself in a brand new relationship with a beautiful individual and you're living life to the fullest and you learned a ton from that. Guess what will happen to the people around you? Who do they remember you as? The asshole you used to be. Social contracts, my friends, are what will hold you into freaking places of paralysis for the rest of your life. You know what a social contract is? We all have a, so you have a social contract with me. Whether you follow me on social media, you have a social contract with every single human being that you come in contact with. What that means is I know you well enough to know that if I do this, you're going to do that. And we have this social agreement. There's a social exchange, whether that's husband and wife, whether that's brother, sister, friends, your friends. They're used to, you're the same dude and you show up for golf on Saturday morning and you drink the same beer and you do the same shit and whatever, whatever. It's a social agreement. We have social agreements with people. What happens when you decide to change? What happens when you decide to be somebody different or do something different? What happens? You're breaking contracts with people. Contemplate that for a second. Who are the people that hold you back, hold you back the most? The people closest to you. Typically the people that will talk the most shit about your ideas or bring up your past, your failures, your things the most are the people that are closest to you. So as you're trying to expand and grow, they're like, whoa, 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 you're the fucking dickhead who, who is like a, an asshole. You're an asshole. You're like, no, dude, I, I learned my lesson and I understand that I was an asshole and I did a lot of dumb shit. Here's what I learned. No, 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 It's like the little kid in the corner. No, 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 I don't want to hear it. You're the asshole. And we have two choices. Peace out and leave them or stay in the social agreement with them. This is what holds most people back from starting a business, expanding, growing. As we make these mistakes, we, do, we have this life that we've lived, and people put us in that box. That is our social agreement. And as we try and expand and grow, it makes them really uncomfortable. Like, wait a second, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, what, what are you, like, fucking Tony Robbins now? All this hippy-dippy, like, feel-good shit? You're like, yeah, I want to feel good. He's fucking weird, dude. It's nuts, right? <laughs> Have you ever experienced that? Oh, yeah. Like this is the dilemma, this is what's happening is we're literally being sucked in and stuck back by the people that are typically closest to us based off these social contracts. Yep. You are who you are today, all of you, because of the choices and decisions you made yesterday. I don't give, it doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter how far you went. You understand that? Like your journey, I had to go through the shit that I went through. I had to go through it. People mock the fuck out of me all the time. Dude, you lost $12 million. I'm like, I did. And I got a better, better financial education than your Harvard and fucking Columbia combined. I know more about money now than I could have ever learned going to any Ivy League school. I learned the real shit. Did you learn? Have you learned? Are you the person you were yesterday? Dude, this Tyler dude, he's like all these videos and stuff, and who the fuck does he think he is? What, is he trying to be Gary Vee? Gary's a cool dude. I think that's a compliment. People say that all the time to me. You try to be like Tony Robbins, be like, Tony Robbins is literally helping millions and millions and millions of people around the world. If that's a bad thing, then cool, I'll, I'll go be that guy. Understand something, like, the liberation is in here. The liberation is in here. You allow people to hold you there. You allow people to hold you into the past. I've done so much dumb shit. You know, I don't know who talks about it the most. You want to know who talks about me losing millions of dollars the most? You. Nope. The people that have never made one. I talked to Andy for, you guys know Andy Frisilla? I talk to Andy all the time. You know how many times he's talked about me losing millions of dollars? Never. Never. Do you know how many people that have gone through divorce make fun of me being divorced? No. Zero. 
Who makes fun of, who makes fun of uh, me being divorced? People have never been married. You put way too much fucking stock in other people. You put way too much stock in what other people think. What if the growth and expansion and us moving our lives into a place of authenticity and realness where we literally say, fuck everyone. What if that's normal? Like everything around us are these social influences of who we should be, what we should look like. How many of your families, how many of you make a good living? Pretty much everybody here. How many of you have someone around you in your sphere or your circle that throws little jabs at the money? Not anymore. Think about that for a second. That has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. Like, what are you hung up on with your past? What is it? You're not a drunk, period. It's the insanity of wanting to go back and change that shit. You can't. I'll give you a billion dollars. I'll give you a trillion. I know that. that just I'll bring Jesus down himself, and he'll freaking give you a shoulder rub. You can't do it. And how do you get punched in the mouth and say, let that shit. Right here, right now, you stand, and you're like, I'm a bad fucking dude. I'm a bad motherfucker. Every single morning, I, I look in the mirror. I have mantras. I think you probably heard me talk about this. I've written on my bathroom mirror, you are a bad motherfucker. And I repeat mantras every single morning in my bathroom mirror. That's weird, man. That's hippy dippy. Really? It's working pretty damn good for me. Because I don't give a fuck about any of you. I want you to think about that for a second. I want you to think about that for a second. When you get to a place where you legitimately don't give a shit about anybody, but you will help everyone. When you get to a place where you're like, <laughs> you laugh at that shit. You remember that one time we got so fucking smashed and I went to the gym, and it's like, yeah, who am I today? You are who you are today because the choices and decisions you made yesterday. And what I would ask you is, do you really believe that? Do you really believe you're a bad motherfucker? I really believe it. Can you stand up and look at somebody and be like, I'm a bad motherfucker? Because most people go, oh, that's kind of presumptuous. Fuck it isn't. That's exactly how I feel. Nobody can freaking beat me. Yeah. Test me. Test me. When you move your mind into a place of power and certainty, when you become a creator of your reality, anything you want, power, passion, purpose, and production. We're going to talk about core four this afternoon. If you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. When you look at yourself and you're like, I can create whatever physique I want. You know that you can, right? You can literally create whatever the fuck you want with your body. It's like a Petri dish. We're like, we're freaking little neurons and protons and whatever the fuck we are. It's like we're these crazy little things. We can do whatever we want with our body. Same thing with our business. Same thing with our relationships. Same thing with our mind. Success leaves clues. Success leaves clues. Isn't it interesting how you hear some people that you would consider successful saying the same thing over and over and over again, but for some reason you don't believe it. For some reason you're thinking that there's got to be something different. We go back to the thing. Here's the pill. I don't want that pill. Give me a different pill. No, take this pill because this is what it takes. I want you to understand something, guys. Like You can walk out of here and you can be whatever you want to be. That's not hippy-dippy bullshit. If you want to become a movie star, you can go be a movie star. Is there anything stopping you from becoming a movie star? Is there anything stopping you becoming extraordinarily wealthy? Other than you. Now you are who you are today because the choices and decisions you made yesterday. And I'd have you consider for a second that there's a shit ton of people out there that probably think and feel the same way you do. They're just waiting for you to show up. Living that power and that authority, leading that tribe. I went through a really, really, really dark period of time. There's a reason that 800 million people have watched the videos that I've shared and that follow the things that I say, because it's different. Would you agree that it's different than a majority of the people that you consume content from online? Why is it different? Because they want to listen to the things they're afraid to admit themselves. It's true. We talked about this last night. When you try and curate, coming in, I'm going to massage myself right into your consciousness and your brain. Fuck all that, man. This is who I am. 
If you like me, great. If you don't like me, great. I like me. Does this make sense? Who are, the, who are the people talking about me losing millions of dollars? They haven't made one. Yep. Who are the people talking about your wealth and how many chickens you guys have? Well, they have like 30 chickens. We only have six. Fuck those guys. <laughs> Great, then go buy some more chickens. You know what I'm saying? Guys, we are hanging on. We, we, we the people, all of us are hanging on to way too many opinions of other people. I want to have this conversation. I mean, this is not the direction I wanted to go. I want to have this conversation because so many of you Resonate with this, do you? Yes. You give way too many shits what other people think. You give way too many shits about what other people say and who they think you are. I have a social contract with all of you. So many people get offended when I'm like, I don't give a damn about most people. I don't. But anybody who spent any period of time around me knows like I'll give all the shirts that I have. Just who I am but I legitimately don't give a flying fuck what you think about me. Your opinion matters nothing to me. Contemplate that for a second. You go on to create wealth, you go on to build business and your family wants to judge you, people want to judge you. Oh, who do you think you are? I'm a bad dude. I'm a fucking great dad. I'm a great business leader. I can tell you right now that like, I did not get to this level of consciousness by just hippy-dippy praying, all right, come on, give it to me. I watch this Joe Rogan video every fucking morning for like the last year and a half. I'm not making that shit up. I, if you came to my house right now, it's written on my bathroom mirror. You are a bad motherfucker. I get out of the shower and I'm staring at it and I'm saying it over and over and over, staring myself in the eyes. I put a gun in my mouth. I did not want to live. I saw zero value in me moving forward with my life. Zero. This is not a look at me. This is where do you want to go? Because it's real. It's very fucking real. You can bound yourself, hit yourself all day long, feel sorry for yourself, feel sorry for yourself, feel sorry for yourself. But like, dude, what the fuck is that doing for me? What's it doing for me? Is it making you more money? Hanging on to the past? Is it making you happier? Beating yourself up? Cool. So why not go do the things that make you happy? Is there a reason why you wouldn't? Okay, so here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to take a couple minutes now, and I want you to share. We kind of went off a little tangent there. It's great, though. Thank you for saying what you guys said. Like, this is an open deal. You have a question. You want to talk about something this is different than being in front of 10,000 people or whatever. I want to engage with as much of your shit, your reality as possible. Um, I want you to share what you wrote down with your, with your tribe, with your group. Read it. When you write something down, I want you to read what you wrote for a reason. Because what you wrote down is real. How many of you just kind of did a cliff note version or started that? Well, I thought about it and I started, and, and this is what my thing is, and here's what I'm afraid of. You read that shit, because it's what's real. Some emotions behind this, why? Tyler? Emotions. Oh. Two. How's that feel? Feels good. Why? It's just liberating. Wait. Does anybody else resonate with that? I mean, yeah. It feels good, but it's scarier than shit. We've always heard the truth shall set you free, so why don't we do it? Stand, stand, stand up, stand up, stand up. Don't stand up. <laughs> everybody shut up. Everybody shut up. And listen. Say what you just said. We've all heard and read it. The truth such that you such set, set you free. But we don't do it of the fear. And why the fuck not? 
That's what we're here for. And the truth shall set you free. It's kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> shall we know set you free? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why don't you share that shit? Um, so I mean, it's just what you said in the beginning: fear of judgment of love, rise, rejection. Rejection. Being yeah. vulnerable. Vulnerable. We're not built. We don't. We're not trained to be vulnerable. Me and I'm not. What can? What? What? How can I train you to be vulnerable? Which is something I'm terrible at. So when you're terrible at something, I hide my feelings down deep and don't share that crap with anybody. Cool. So when you do it, how does it feel? How does it feel? Well, it feels like crap. I don't have an inch for it. It's scary. No, I'm not asking you for for, yeah. for, the, for that. When you share your truth, when you share your truth, when you share your truth, it is scary. It is dark. I got raped as a kid. I raped somebody. I killed somebody. I stole whatever. How's it feel to share that? It's scary as fuck. Mm -hmm. Then what happens afterwards? Liberation. But we're afraid to be judged. You're going to be judged either way. You will be judged either way. Hear me. Like, you will be judged for all of it. Either way. We're carrying, we got a backpack. All of us. And all of these stories, all of these lies, all of the half truths, mistruths, they're just rocks. We want to sprint, we want to run, we want to be able to play with the kids, we want to be able to earn, we want to, be able to grow. And yet we've got this fucking backpack. Oh shit. Is it your fault that I'm carrying the backpack? No. <laughs> Truth will set you free. <clears throat> Dude, really? That, you have that bearded guy come just tell you that? Like that <laughs> 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 Yeah, motherfuckers, that is the fucking game. That is the game. That is the game. How deep will you go? How much will you fucking say? You want to really rock the marketplace? Tell the truth. All of it, bro. All of it. All the shit you don't want to talk about, that's what you talk about. All the shit you don't want to say, that's what you say. Airy fairy fluffy shit. Whatever. We hear that shit all day long. <coughs> legacy. Let's build a legacy. We're building a legacy of shit. Of lies. Because you're not telling the truth. What's up, guys? If you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page, then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we wanna have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.